everybody, this is Melissa Haldeman with Mesquite Field Farm, and today we're going to be making um, face masks. Before we do that, I'd like to disclaimer that uh, these do not take the place of N95 masks if you're an emergency room personnel or working in the medical profession. Um, these probably just be for everyday folks that just want to protect themselves a little bit. When I first started down this journey, it was very frustrating getting all kinds of different information. So what I will say is, this is not N95. This isn't going to protect you from anything like N95, but it's certainly better than nothing. So without further ado, I'm going to show you what we need to make this today. <clears throat> of course, you're going to need your fabric, um, preferably two different colors so you can tell the front from the back. Um, and then we're going to actually line these with the interfacing, your pattern. And I just cut this out of cardstock. It's nine inches by seven inches, and you're going to cut one of each color or two of the same color, whichever is your preference. And then two pieces of elastic cut seven inches long. And what I usually do is just wrap the elastic around my cardstock for the seven inches. And then <clears throat> you're going to need rot rotary cutters for the fabric. Always have your seam rippers around, some um, scissors for cutting off stray threads, um, your seam marker, and then um, just a chopstick or something to push through your corners. I should mention first is that you want to wash your fabric before you start cutting it out because if these masks are going to be reusable and washed repeatedly. If you don't, then they're going to shrink. So, and that could be a problem later. So, we're going to start by cutting out our fabric. <clears throat> and I've got this one actually, um, this is about the size of a fat quarter. So, um, I can get four masks out of this actually. Okay, the next thing you wanna cut out is your um, interfacing, and you're gonna to wanna to cut one for each side of the mask. So for each mask that you're making, you're gonna to wanna to cut two as well. Um, I'm using a lightweight, I believe this is the featherweight. Let me just double check that. Yes, this is the featherweight to midweight fabrics. instructions out. Since I know I'm going to be making several of these, I'm going to go ahead and try to cut as many out of this as I possibly can. Please make sure that the interfacing that you're using is non-woven, right? So what this does is instead of like a cotton fabric where your weave goes like this, where you have a woven, it's all bonded particles so that um, it helps prevent smaller um, viruses and, and bacteria from getting through. Of course, it's not perfect, it's not 100%, but it helps. got our pieces cut out. One thing I wanted to recommend that was pointed out to me by my father today actually is it's a good idea if you use two different fabrics on your mask so that um, when you wash them you can remember which is the inside and which is the outside and if you, especially if you reuse it um, before you get a chance to wash it you want to make sure that the side that was out stays out so you're not putting those germs directly onto your face. So just a good idea to use two different colors if you can. So once you've got your pieces cut out, what you want to do is follow the instructions on your interfacing and attach it to your fabric. Here I used a fusible interfacing, so all I had to do was iron it with a damp cloth over it to attach that interfacing to the fabric. So the next thing we need to do is put the elastic between the two layers of fabric. So the way you want to go about doing that is, <clears throat> essentially in the end we're going to have our two pieces two pieces with the right sides facing together with the elastic in between them. And you wanna measure down a half an inch, which is what this is. Makes it nice and easy to figure out where your placement needs to be. So you're just gonna set it there at half an inch and then take your other piece of fabric right side down and lay it on top and then pin. Okay, 
Then you want to take that piece of elastic, the other end, <clears throat> excuse me, and bring it around here to the other side. On the short side, this is the seven inch side. Measure up half an inch and set your elastic down. And then again, lay the other piece on top, lining up the edges. It's a little bit tricky because you've already pinned that other side, but it can be done. And then pin. Make sure I get all the way through. That pin is crooked. Okay. And then we're going to repeat that same process on the other side. And now we get to go to the sewing machine. What we want to do here is we're going to stitch all four sides. Um, however, when we get to this edge, we're going to leave a gap about two inches wide so that we can turn this whole thing right side out. When you go over the pieces of elastic, you are going to want to backstitch. And we are stitching this on a quarter inch seam. Do not stitch over your pins. corner you're going to turn Backstitch a little bit just to reinforce that seam. And then I'm going to lift up the presser foot and then come down about two inches. You can eyeball it, it doesn't have to be exact. And then finish stitching the line, backstitch a little bit, a couple of times rather. And then go down to the end. Okay. Now, scissors. Cut the uh, line right here where you had that gap. Trim it up. Basically just going to trim up all the stray threads on here. And then we're going to clip the corners. find our gap and turn it right side out. We can use 
the elastic to help pull it for you. Okay, I'm gonna take a little chopstick here or you could use your scissors closed. Um, and we're just gonna turn out those seams and press the edge a bit here. Makes things easier once you, when you iron it. So now we gotta go to the ironing machine and do some pressing. And we need to first make one flat press on this. Make sure that you fold in that open seam because we're gonna be top stitching over that later but we wanna have it ironed in. So I'm just gonna start by pressing the edges. Then what we, once we've gotten that done, what we want to do is flip it over. This is the inside, and we're going to fold it in half. We're working on our pleats now for the mask. So the first thing you want to do is fold it in half and press that pleat in. Okay, then you want to open it up. You want to take this bottom here and fold it into that middle pleat that you just made. And then press the line there. Turn it around and bring up this side to the middle pleat. Or middle line. So what that does when you turn it over is it now gives you three lines to work with to build your pleats, okay? So when we're making our pleats, you're going to grab that first line, and obviously, because I've made one upside down once, check the direction of your fabric if it's really important to you and make sure that it's facing the correct direction. So we're going to take fold this up on that line that you ironed, and you're going to bring this up a half an inch, okay, so that's the width of your gauge, okay? and Hold it down there, and then we're gonna pin it. And I like to pin at the top of the pleat because that gives me a little more room to play with later on with the rest of the pleats. Okay, and then we're gonna take the next line, measure it with the gauge, half an inch, and pin. And then your last pleat. <clears throat> and then flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. pleats folded in what we're going to do next is go back to the machine and we're going to top stitch around at a quarter inch so now we're going to do the quarter inch seam around and I will tell you this part can be a little tricky especially if you're making these with the interface sometimes it's too it's really thick and so the um, the feed dogs don't want to grab the material and you kind of have to push it and play with it a little bit um, but hopefully we'll get lucky here let's see you want to go kind of slow around those pleats. You've got to pull your pins out. You don't want to bend your pins. And you might feel like it's not super secure, but don't worry. We're going to come around and top stitch a second time around with our pins.
And also you want to make sure when you get to this side where the pleats are up this way that they don't catch on your presser plate. When you get to this side, the top of the pleats, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally stitch this pleat, excuse me, in with your seam line here. So just keep an eye on it. And then back stitch at the end a couple of times. Now we're back at the beginning. So we're going to make another round all the way around, oh. but also my bobbin ran out of thread. Make our second round and we're going to try to stay as close to the original, the first stitching as possible. And back stitch again. is all done. And if you need to, like for people like me who have a small head, you can shorten up the elastic a little bit and make it a tighter fit around the ears. I plan on wearing this over a mask, so um, this is acts more like a cover to extend the life of the other mask that I have. And that's it. Um, as I've discovered, this pattern usually calls for a quarter inch elastic. Um, and I have found that the last several times I've gone to the store, they do not have any anymore. So I just wanted to share with you some other alternatives that you could use to the quarter inch elastic. So we could, uh, you could use this um, rope elastic as another option, if you can find that. If you can't find that, another thing that you can do is take half inch elastic and cut it in half, which will give you a quarter, two quarter inch strips of elastic. That's another option. And then the other thing that you can do uh, is use bias tape. So these are obviously aren't gonna be elastic around the ears, but they will be ties around the head. So instead of stitching your elastic in, you would just follow the same pattern, stitch around, leave your opening, turn it, and then you would take your bias tape and bind it around your pleats and stitch it on that way, okay? And then you would have your ties for the bottom and your ties for the top. I will tell you that for the ties, you want those to be at least 18 inches long on each side, top and bottom. So you're gonna need at least two yards of bias tape for each mask. That being said, this is relatively inexpensive and pretty plentiful. And also if you have a bias tape maker, you could make your own bias tape. Thank you.